Not today. Another rare wolf test. Today we're doing it on the Nothing Phone One. And I'm gonna test out the phone throughout the day, all while we explore, as per the usual. But first things first. No, no way at all. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Coffee. Check. And this is Bryant Park, a four acre park that's kind of like the backyard to the New York Public Library. Originally, around when the grid system of streets was being designed for this still as of yet rural area of Manhattan in the early 1800s, this lot, and where the public library is, was actually a potter's field, which is a nice way of saying a graveyard for people who couldn't afford the fancier graveyards at the time. Shortly thereafter, in 1840, the city began to construct the Croton Distributing Reservoir, which was a giant reservoir with 50-foot walls that were 25 feet thick for fresh water for the city coming from the much larger receiving reservoir that is actually where Central Park now sits. And all of that was coming from the Croton Reservoir 41 miles north of the city through giant pipes powered only by gravity. If you didn't see my DJI Mini 3 Pro real-world test, I actually go and visit that reservoir. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link below. Next to the reservoir, though, a public park was made in 1870, and eventually the reservoir was removed and the park was extended. Now, it eventually would get the name Bryant Park to honor the longtime editor of the New York Evening Post, William Cullen Bryant, in 1884. And that's when the library was commissioned to be built. The park would go through a lot between then and now, with periods of construction and deconstruction and even crime. It would eventually be redesigned, though, in the early 90s, to more or less the same layout that we have here now, with more and more attractions and events added since. And now it's a great little spot to just have a coffee and maybe work using the free Wi-Fi that they have or just kind of hang out. All right, while we're here though, let's talk a bit about the design. The phone has glass on the front and back with a aluminum frame around the edges, and that's a kind of straight-edged aluminum frame. Not gonna lie, there's another phone that looks and feels similar to this one because of that. But it does feel lighter than the size would suggest. And while it does come in two colors, white and black, both have probably the most recognizable feature about it, which is a transparent back. It's like the 90s are making a comeback. Now that transparent back does allow for another feature, which are essentially LEDs here in the back called glyphs. But we'll go into a bit more detail on that later. And if you're not familiar, this is actually the second product from the company nothing. The first product was the ear ones, I guess, but those were also transparent and so we're sensing a pattern for all of their products most likely. Now the other side of the device, we have the OLED 6.55 inch screen that has a 1080p resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate, which just means that things on the screen seem smoother because of the amount of animations per second that it can handle. And overall, the screen does look nice. Colors are bright and contrast is good uh, and that 120 hertz does help make things feel even smoother. Now under that display, we have a fingerprint sensor that works well actually. And I like the fact that it has an always on circle to just show you where to put your finger. So you don't have to rely on muscle memory alone. And lastly, the phone is IP53 rated, so it can handle kind of being caught in the rain and some light sprinklings of water and dust. Okay, it's hot. So uh, let's go check out another place that was kind of built around the same time as the library and this park and in a similar style, but we can be inside of it and it has air conditioning. Pants were a bad idea today. Sweet, sweet air conditioning. Welcome to Grand Central. We've definitely been here multiple times in other videos, uh, but today we're not gonna get on a train. So in the mid 1800s, there were multiple competing railroads that went to various different places. Three of these, the New York and Harlem Railroad, the Hudson River Railroad, and New York and New Haven Railroad agreed that a unified station for the mall in New York City would make a lot of sense. This station was originally called the Grand Central Depot, and it opened in 1871, and was put here at this location specifically because earlier in 1854, the city banned steam engines because of the soot that they just kind of spewed all the time. Below 42nd Street. At the time, everything above that was pretty rural. So 42nd Street made sense for where the trains would terminate. But 
The city's demand for transit quickly outgrew the original station, and as was the usual back then, a design competition was had in 1903, with the winning company, Reed and Stem, along with another company that was hired to do the outside separately, getting to create what is now called Grand Central Terminal. Even though a lot of people call it Grand Central Station, myself included, that's technically the name of the post office building nearby, as well as the subway station underneath here. This is the terminal. And it is the largest train station in the world, both in terms of size, but also number of platforms. It's 49 acres and has 44 platforms that are all housed underground. But what it's probably most known for is the Apple Store. Just kidding, it's this main concourse and this ceiling. Now this ceiling is based off of Johann Bayer's 1603 star atlas called Uranometria. I don't know. Fun fact though, it's backwards. East is west and west is east. So the speculation is that someone projected this design from the ground onto the ceiling so that it could be painted and that reversed it. They're not changing it now. While we're here though, and speaking of shiny lights like the stars, let's talk about the design feature that everyone's curious about on this phone. Behind our transparent glass back are a series of LEDs in a few different sections that collectively nothing calls glyphs. Basically you get a series of custom ringtones and notifications, 10 of each, that play sounds as, you know, they would do. But each has a corresponding pattern of flashes from the LEDs. This means that you can essentially choose whatever pattern you want for anything that you can set a ringtone or a notification for. So one for everything, but also specific ones for specific notifications in each app, or even phone calls from specific contacts. You can't sadly set them for text for specific contacts though. And that's the gist, honestly, but there are a few things to note. Firstly, they only work when the screen is off. So if you're using the phone at all, it won't light up. At least I can't find a way to get it to. I'd like to be able to have it flash all the time, just even like as an option. I want it to be obnoxious. I want an obnoxious mode that I can turn on. Now look, I totally get why they did it this way, but as this is sort of the biggest feature of this phone, I should be able to just turn this on so I can, you know, show it off. Now, one of the main ways that you can see the pretty lights light up is using flip to glyph. Now this feature allows you to flip over the phone face down and it'll silence the phone. I feel like everyone I know actually has their phone on vibrate at this point, but this will then turn off the vibrations and that'll allow the lights to be the only way that you'll be notified. And it's kind of novel, but it also means that you better leave the screen protector that comes with the phone on. As you will, as I have already noticed on this unit, scratch the hell out of the screen by doing so. Now, if you don't want to be as obnoxious as I'd like to be with these, they are really bright by default to make sure that you can see them in the daylight, I imagine. But you can also adjust the brightness in the settings easy enough. Now, the lights also serve a few other functions, like a charging indicator that fills as the phone charges. There's a fill light option for video instead of the camera flash that's a bit softer. There's also a blinking red light that you can turn on for whenever you're recording video if you want. And if you save a contact as Abra, as in abracadabra, I imagine, and then set a ringtone to them in the glyph menu, you can get a hidden option to use the lights as a music visualizer that'll flash to whatever sounds are coming out of the speakers. Honestly, the lights are a fun differentiator and it's nice to see any company trying new design things, but how often will you use it once the novelty wears off? And when you can lay your phone face up like most people do anyway, you already get notifications that have, you know, icons and text to tell you what they are. So, I don't know. trailer felt like an uh, advertisement for the multiverse Marvel movies of some sort. A little intense. In homage to the transparent back of this phone, let's check a pretty impressive see-through observation deck near Grand Central called Summit One Vanderbilt. This experiential observation deck is the top three floors of a building called One Vanderbilt. It's the fourth tallest building in New York City behind One World Trade, Central Park Tower, and 111 West 57th Street. And there's actually a connection between Grand Central and this building underground. And it was part of a deal actually to let the tower even be built in the first place. They had to provide improvements to the subway station underneath the building, which actually ended up allowing it to accommodate 65,000 more passengers. The Summit One Vanderbilt is 93 stories high and is comprised of a few different installations. Art installations meant to mimic clouds, rooms that have mirrors all over the place to give a very interesting feeling while you're this high up and even a bar that apparently turns into like a nightclub towards the end of the night. Hmm. 
Now, personally, I think I prefer the One World Trades vibe, but definitely an interesting observation deck, and the views don't suck. Now, while we're here though, this seems like a good a place as any to test out the Nothing Phone One's cameras. So firstly, we have a 50 megapixel F1.9 main camera with optical stabilization, one micron sized pixels, and it's about 24 millimeter equivalent. And then we have another 50 megapixel F2.2 aperture ultra wide camera with 0.64 micron sized pixels. Now, both these cameras have their pixels binned in sets of four, which gives you a 12.5 megapixel image when you're done. And that's to increase the size of each pixel, which improves low light performance. Now we also have a two times button in the viewfinder and that's not a separate camera obviously, but it does a two times digital zoom of the main sensor. In addition to that, we have a 16 megapixel selfie camera and we can shoot 4K 30 on the rear cameras and 1080p on the front one. And something I have to commend nothing for here, they have a macro mode but they didn't use a separate macro camera. I've said this a million times in a ton of other videos, but I hate when companies just put macro cameras or depth sensors on the back of the phone just to say they have an extra camera. When we already know you don't need that hardware, case in point here with the Nothing Phone, to do macro mode. This is the Campbell. It's a bar that was originally just one room that was created out of the office of John W. Campbell, an American financier from back in the early 1900s, who was also on the board of directors for New York Central Railroad. He leased this space in 1923 and began adding opulence. From a hand-painted plaster of Paris ceiling to leaded windows, to even a Persian carpet that at the time cost $300,000. That's the equivalent of $3.5 million today. It would be an office by day, and he would turn into a reception hall for entertaining friends at night. Now, after he died in 1957, the rug was the first thing to disappear. <laughs> it was restored in 1999 and turned into a bar utilizing the same style, and even keeping the faux fireplace and Campbell's steel safe that he had inside of that. The original bar, called Campbell's Apartment, lost its lease in 2016 in a bidding war for the space, and now it's owned by a new company that relaunched it as The Campbell. They even expanded it to have the original area called Campbell's Bar, the Campbell Palm Court just outside of that in the atrium, and Campbell's Terrace outside the building on the side of Grand Central. Now last time I was here, it was Campbell's apartment. <laughs> and while it feels a little different than it did, for one, like the strict dress code is no longer a thing, the Campbell's Bar area still retains its old school charm. So at Summit One Vanderbilt, the phone died. So here is the battery usage, and screen on time and all that for anyone who's curious about that. Now, obviously, keep in mind, today was not a normal day. It was a real world test. I used the camera a ton. And so here's how that did with that. But here's another day where I used the phone a lot more normally, so you could have something to compare that to. And honestly, the battery feels okay. It has 33 watt fast charging and Qi 15 watt, as well as reverse charging in the form of five watt. But there is no charger in the box. I, after it was about to die, plugged it into my fast charging little battery pack, and we gained 40% back in 30 minutes. Now, for the software on the phone, the operating system is Android 12, and it's, it's clean. It hasn't really been touched much. It feels a bit like how the Pixel does, at least in that respect. And nothing's added their signature dot matrix font, just sprinkled throughout the UI. In addition to that, nothing also is supposedly adding in support for third parties to put their controls in the operating system itself. Right now, Tesla is there, and it lets you unlock the doors and start the AC. This is all listed under experimental features. Okay, calling it a night. And the truth is, this isn't a bad phone, considering the price. Now, to be clear, it is not launching in the United States anytime soon at least, but based on its UK price of 399 pounds, that equates to about $485. And that's for the base model, eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Now the battery is decent. The performance is pretty snappy compared to most other devices in this price range, even if it does slow down here and there. Uh, and it's not quite as fast as another device that I'll talk about more in a second. And I also have to commend them for at least trying something different design wise. I'll leave it up to you guys to let me know in the comments below if you think it's just a gimmick or would you actually use it? Always appreciate 
hearing from you guys. Personally though, I'd probably recommend the Pixel 6a over this. It has maybe a little bit better of a battery, definitely has a better camera, it's snappier performance wise, and it even costs a little bit less. But besides that phone, it's not a bad contender for $500. But you guys let me know in the comments below what you think of the phone, of my video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. I'll also leave a link below to the best price that I could find on this phone. And if you like this video, you wanna explore some more with me, check out the rest of the Real World Test series. I'll link that around here somewhere. And if you really like it, please subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified whenever I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. You think when you're like in a park, you're not gonna have as much noises, but no, this is New York City. All of our parks surrounded by sounds. Can't win. That is six. It's like he waits for me to talk and I just click, 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 whoop, 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 whoop. Just as you go to record, train announcements. She just made this announcement. They get it. It's boarding soon. I'm just angry. This is actually very useful information. I know. It's my fault. Should not be filming in an active train station. One of the busiest in the world. Probably should have thought that through.